There's a huge range of canister filters, but they all do pretty much the same thing. So all they are is a canister that sits outside the fish tank. They have an intake and an outtake. They have a little motor and an impeller inside here. And it pretty much just the water siphons down, goes through the bottom, comes up through the different trays of media. So you have sponges, bio media to grow good bacteria and chemical media like carbon to absorb stuff and bits and pieces like that. And then the water gets pumped back into the tank. So all it is is an in and an out. We're gonna open this box, which is an a canister filter show you what parts and bits and pieces are in there and then how to connect it to a tank like that one there so let's open the box and welcome to the floor we have our box we have our straps that have been removed so in the box and this is all one-handed obviously we have a big box here which will be all your pumps and bits and pieces so obviously this is the thousand liter an hour one the other ones vary depending on what bits and pieces you get but you get a whole lot of pipes and stuff like that which are your intake and your outtake pipes you get your little doohickey that sits on top of the filter and that's pretty much what regulates the water going in and out with a little stop valve and you get pipes so you get quite a lot of pipe so it's enough pipe to pretty much do quite a few different things you can hook these up to chillers to other filters uv sterilizers and then back into the tank again we won't sort of worry too much about that in this video it's just going to be a basic how to get these things started so and there is your canister so we'll open this up it is out of the bag. We have clips. So they usually come with all different types of clips depending on what canister you've got. That one's just got four on the side. That is the inside bits of it. Who are the inside bits? So if we twist this bit off here, there we go. That is your impeller. So that is pretty much the main maintenance you need to do with any of these canister filters every month or two, pull it apart and clean this bit here. So the canister itself may last for months and months without needing to be cleaned. But if you don't clean this bit, it's gonna build up grime, stuff the little shafty thing in there, and then that is going to blow your motor. So super important, it's got little rubber grommets on each side, so make sure they sit back. That twists like that, and away we go. So that is your impeller. Inside it, you have this little bit here, which stops all the filter media from getting into the impeller. Then you have trays. So that is the first tray. That is like just a carbon, come out of there. That's just a little carbon doohickey. So carbon, you get foam as well. The second tray, that is your biomedia. So obviously you want to take it out of this plastic bag. We've had a lot of people buy these over the years, never open it. And then when you go to clean it, you've got all your media in a bag, which doesn't really do anything. But that is just ceramic biomedia. Second, third tray. This is the third tray. Plastic biomedia. It's a pretty cheap media. We would recommend upgrading this to another type like that, a little bit more porous, but this will still work perfectly fine. And then you have another finer sponge. So the whole idea of these filters is the water gets pumped down the bottom and then comes up through the trays. So you want your coarser sponges first and then finer, finer, and then your biomedia last. So we're going to sort of switch all this around a little bit and jump to that. And that is our free tray setup. So the water will go through the bottom. So this is the bottom layer. It's just a coarse sponge. These biomedia balls, we're just gonna use to collect a little bit of the detritus and gunky stuff like that. Then it goes through a finer sponge, your biomedia, and then it polishes the water off with just a carbon thing. So you don't really want a lot of gunk going into this. So ideally, once the carbon is absorbed, which takes about sort of six to eight weeks, we would chuck this carbon bit away, and then move the biomedia to the top one, different sponge in here, and so you've got coarser, finer, and then you've got your biomedia. So that way you won't need to clean your biomedia up very often. But there's tons of different ways of doing this, lots of different videos. If you've got any questions, just comment down below. We're gonna put these trays back in here and then we're gonna assemble it onto a tank. And when you're putting your trays back in, make sure that all these little holes align up. So you want all the holes aligned, otherwise the water's not gonna go through and then come back up, obviously. So once that is all aligned like that have a look underneath there you've got that big hole there that hole also needs to align one-handed is always fun there we go align align there we go so once it's aligned when you clip it it should easily clip in and that's going to solve the whole seal issue there so now all we have to do is open this bit which is our in and our out Magically, it is out of the bag. That just pushes, oh, don't break it. That just pushes in like that. Then that locks it in place. This will actually turn the water off and on. So when you go to clean the whole canister filter out, you can lift that off. 
Oh, one hand, one hand again. Oh, there we go. And then your cords are still stuck there. You can take that, clean that, bring it back and connect it back to your pipes by pushing down. And then once you turn that on, the water will start siphoning back in again. So the other feature with these, which I'll show you in a second, to open this, is that bit there, which is a little plunger. A lot of people have issues with these plunger bits. All the plunger does is it creates a vacuum when you push it down and that siphons the water into this. So we're gonna do that next. We're going to cut all our bits and pieces, go through that and then get it primed. And all our bits are out of the box. So this is the basic sort of stuff that's gonna come with most canister filters. You have an intake, which the water goes into the filter, and then you have an outtake where it sprays back into the tank. So these are designed to hook onto most tanks, but you can modify them depending on what type of tank lids you've got and so on and so on. So you have a little grill like this. This is super important. That stops fish from getting sucked into that intake and ending up in your filter, which is never a good thing. So that goes over the end of that. So this bit here, which is the outtake which is back into the tank you push this little bit into there and then you've got a spray bar so the spray bar joins up together let me see if I can get my hands free with this one so the spray bar hooks in together like that and then it hooks in there so once you've got your spray bar and you can adjust the length of it in that it just hooks into this bit here as easy as that so that is pretty much the basics of what a canister filter is. So it goes into the filter and then it goes out into the tank. So you have suction caps like these to hook onto this and I'll show you that in a second once it's in the tank. This little bag of things here is a surface skimmer. We're not gonna use this because a lot of filters don't come with this, but it's got this little grommet here that is gonna go in that little bit there, otherwise it's gonna suck water and air through into our filter and it's not gonna work. So we're gonna open that, stick that on that. Okay, I do hickey is in there. It also does come with instructions and a lot of canisters do. You can either read that or if you're like me, you don't like reading instructions, you can watch this video, <laughs> which is what you're doing. So most of them will come with random other little bits and pieces. It's just a little turny bit, which you can hook on and rotate the little nozzly bit if you want. So they come with extra suction caps and stuff like that. So don't panic if you don't use all the parts. Long as it works when you turn it on, you'll be fine. Otherwise you'll just have to go back and check everything. So that is what we were up to. We've got, these are even color coordinated. So the red is pretty much into the filter and then the blue one is into the tank. So all we're gonna do now is bring this over to our tank. We are going to connect the tubing to these bits and then we're gonna measure it to see how high or how, how high the tubing is. Yeah, that makes sense. We're gonna see how much tubing we need to make sure we don't have any kinks and then we're gonna turn it on. So to the tank. And we've moved to a different floor. So we've got our filter, we've got our tank. So we're gonna hook it onto this tank, which is about a 90 centimeter tank. Depending on how big your tank is, depends on how big your filter is, you can figure that out. If you're not sure, comment down below and I can probably give you a rough guide as well, depending on how big your tank is and what size filter you need. But what we're gonna do now is pretty much get these bits. Make sure that when you have that the right size, it's not digging into the gravel. So see how that's a little bit too deep? So what you can do is you can actually cut down this tubing with a hacksaw and you want your no inlet nozzle about that sort of high. So you don't want it right down into the substrate because it's gonna pick up your substrate and that. So you want it probably about five, 10 centimeters, an inch or two sort of thing off the bottom. Uh, so the other side, which is your spray bar, Again, if your spray bar is too long for your tank, you can cut that down as well. Most of the spray bars have a little nozzle on the end, a knob, is it a nozzle? Is it a knob? Comment down below. They have one of those on the end that you can reduce the length of it. Or this one, which has two spray bars, you can just take one off. So that's gonna sort of pretty much sit there in the tank. Whoops, upside down, there we go. Sit there in the tank. And then all we're gonna do is run our tubing to our canister. So I will cut the tubing and be back in a second. And the tubing has been cut. So it's super important when you cut the tubing that you don't have any kinks or any loops or anything like that, because that's gonna create air bubbles and that's gonna stop the canister from working properly. Uh, so you want a nice straight line all the way from the canister to the tank and same with this one. This is the intake. So with this one and how you connect all this up is all you're gonna do is push this onto the actual nozzle Make sure that it goes all the way over and then this little bit here screws in 
and make sure it's nice and tight. And that's gonna stop any leaks. If you do turn it on and it starts leaking, obviously turn it off, pull all these bits apart and tighten them again. But you shouldn't get any drips or any leaks coming from any of these nozzles. Okay, so now that we've got all that done, we've got our media in there. We have this little primer bit and there's lots of different ways to start it priming. All we wanna do is we wanna siphon water into the canister. So if we push this down, that creates a vacuum. Oh, listen to that. You should be able to hear water filling up in here. We still don't have it plugged in because we wanna get this primed all with water before we turn it on. But you should notice water siphoning into the filter. And if you look up here, because this is underneath the water level, we've got the air from the canister filter getting pushed up and the bubbles are coming up. So once that stops and you actually see water coming up this pipe, it will sort of even out with the height of the tank, then we can turn it on. So we will, whoop, there it goes. But you didn't see that, there's our water level. So that way we know that there's water in this. All we have to do now is find a plug and turn it on. and it is working just like that. So that's about as easy as it gets. So you just wanna make sure, obviously this canister filter would be behind the fish tank, so you're not gonna kick it or anything when you walk in front. So all these you can hide in cabinets, like on the screen. And when you're doing it in the cabinet, same sort of thing. You wanna make sure that your cords aren't kinked, so they just go perfectly out to the top, so as easy as you can get it, and then it'll work fine. If you have any problems with it not actually starting to work, like there's all the water coming through the spray bar now, you, what you can do is you can usually give it a few gentle little shakes and that'll usually get any air bubbles or anything trapped coming up into it. If it completely stops and you actually have too much air in your media, you can turn it off, you can drain it again with water and then prime it again, and then that should get rid of most of those trapped air bubbles and stuff. When you first set them up, usually you get a few little air bubbles and stuff, and that can create a little bit of a problem. So to give it the perfect test, you just want to unplug it from the wall, then plug it back in, and if it works straight away, you're fine. If it whirs and makes noises, that means there's too much air trapped in it, so you might have to pull it apart, give it a few shakes, make sure that all the air is out of it, and then you'll be fine. So that way, if you have a power cut and you turn it off, it's gonna turn straight back on again. But that is how easy it is to set up a canister filter. If you've got any questions about that, comment down below. If you found this video useful, click the thumbs up so I know and I can make more exciting videos like this. Anyway, thank you for watching. Canister filters are go.